Okay. So, um, hi everyone. I'm just going to get started, although I am not your real presenter today, but most of you know me. I'm Joan Ford. And um, the last couple sessions that we've done with the, with um, what I call Buy Rhode Island Teachers for Rhode Island Teachers, um, I'm trying to just do this little quick piece about engaging learners. And so I, as I am also um, allowing people in the room, I'm just going to do a really quick um, screen share. And I just want to talk a bit about my kind of, I think this is kind of my vision. Are you all seeing my uh, screen? You're seeing a three-legged stool there? Okay, great. So this is sort of just a vision of um, how I'm seeing engaging students. And when I listen to presentations like the one we're about to hear today about team teaching, um, it, it always occurs to me that we need to always remember that the content that's our base thing that that we we know what we want to deliver. And I know prior to COVID, content was the piece that people probably felt the more com most comfortable with, right? You had your content and you had your students and, and you and you did the work. And suddenly COVID happened and these flat these three things on the bottom, structure, communication, and delivery have all changed a bit as a result of that. And so it just <clears throat> it always helps me to keep these in mind. So when I think of structure, and I will not get into this in, um, to any great degree, but when I think of structure, I'm thinking, well, you know, how are you structuring the course that you're teaching? You know, are you using Google Classroom, which I know that you folks are using, so we're gonna hear a little bit about that today. Um, I know people are talking about using an LMS. Um, we had someone who talked about using Facebook as, as that real structure. But it's always something, it's a graphic organizer, or it's basically it's where the materials are so that students know um, what to expect. And that's just been a, a super important piece that I think we've all learned or are learning this year. And then the second leg of this is communication. And I guess I don't have to probably tell you that, you know, communication um, is probably different, but it, it truly needs to be ongoing um, and it needs to be certainly with instructors, but also among students. And I know that's one of the pieces that a lot of people feel they struggle with um, because there's just not enough of that communication and people feel isolated. So um, one of some of the tips that we've heard a whole lot about, and again, I think from my conversation with Brittany, I think we're doing a lot of this. So again, I'm listening for some of these things, but things like office hours or how you're using email or how you're using text, texting or how you're using different ways to communicate. And what is that all looking like? And then sort of that final piece is really about the delivery. And sure, we're all using Zoom or we're using Google Meet or we're using something like that. Um, but I think that what teachers are finding that they feel is more successful is when they're able to do some really short mini lessons and, and they're able to engage students often and they're able to say, use the chat, because they're because it's short and they're engaging them or they're they're talking online. Um, I mean, talking. <clears throat> they're taking off their mute and they're talking. Um, we also have talked a lot about multi-sensory ways, visual things, things that are auditory. So it's not. It can't be just the lecture. It can't just be one person talking at you, like I'm doing for this next minute or 30 seconds or whatever, because um, we all get pretty bored with that. Um, so we want to just remind people to do reviews. You know, and if you're doing long classes to get students to stand up, to move around, to do things that are a little bit different. Um, we listened to some training we had over the summer through Mockingbird Education. She called that change of state. And I know for me, I need to get up and move. <laughs> um, the social interaction, super important. And now I'm gonna do my final step, which is don't talk too much. So <laughs> I'm gonna more or less end this. Uh, but I think these things are just all pretty important to remember. Um, because virtual teaching looks different and we want to make sure everybody's aware of that. So, and for that now, I will turn this over. Brittany, I'm going to turn it over to you and you can introduce your team and yourself and go from there. And thank right. you, by the way, for doing this session. Really appreciate it. 
We're excited. Um, Any time that we can kind of put together what we've been trying to do for the last, you know, seven or eight months and make it sound pretty, we'll take the opportunity. So thank you. Um, Before I share screen and I can't see anybody anymore, I just wanted to take a minute to introduce myself and I'm gonna let my team do the same. Uh, My name is Brittany Brown. I'm the Director of Education and Job Development here at Community Action Partnership of Providence County. Um, And I oversee a multitude of programs that we implement content development, professional development, workforce training. We do a little bit of everything. Um, And so while we are really good at doing in-person, for us virtual has also been a learning curve. Um, So for today, we are going to talk a little bit. We have a few slides, but I promise not to overwhelm you. Um, We're going to have you do some act you know, some responding, um, but hopefully by the end of it, you feel like you you feel a little bit more prepared or at least have a strategy or a resource that you can come away with um, to take back to all of the great things that you're doing, I'm sure virtually as well. Um, so I'll give Veronica the floor to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Veronica Vasquez Rodriguez. I am the supervisor of the education and job development department here at CAP. Um, and I pretty much support Brittany and all of the different things that we're doing in our department. And I'm Joan Ayotte. I am the <clears throat> education specialist and uh, education and job specialist. And I'm the, I developed the curriculum and I'm the generally the face of the present, present, presentation for students. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to pull up. Uh, my screen and can everyone see that okay okay Um, so by the end of our time together um, Joan had really wanted us to keep PowerPoint to a minimum but I really wanted to also just make sure that we had some concrete takeaways Um, so identifying personal strengths and facilitating online learning with another collaborator Um, implementing a team teaching strategy that highlights both educator strengths and comfort level because they're not always one in the same. And I think that was one of the reasons why we've had such success with this. Um, And hopefully be able to prepare for instruction with a team approach. Um, And so I forgot that I can't see anyone when you're in share screen. Um, So in the chat, if you could take a minute And if there are any specific questions you want us to address, um, tell us a little bit about your experience thus far, if you have been co-facilitating, or a strategy that has worked that you want to share. Um, So I'm going to give everyone a minute to put that in the chat, and I'm going to ask Jonah Veronica to to moderate the chat because I can't see it. Quiet so far, but I'd like to say hi to Sherry and Al because I've worked with them before. Hi, hi Joan, great to see you here. I started to type in a question and then I was like, well, that doesn't seem like the the right type of question at this point, but I'll I'll tell you, I'm gonna just go ahead and verbalize it if you don't mind. Um, I would say that Rival is is team teaching too. And um, since I don't run a program, um, I'm, I'm wondering, because I think this might be, and Sabine can speak to this, what others are thinking of was, how, how, is, how are the teachers compensated? Because it, it feels like they might be worried about all oh, like double pay, you know, and with already a tight budget this year. Um, yes. So I really am more interested in the pedagogical. That is not like my arena because I don't run a program. I don't have to worry about finances. So I'm kind of just thinking okay. that others might be thinking about that. Sabine, is that... Would you be thinking about that or not really? I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, good then. All right. Then I'll Money's speak always up. on the brain. And you know what? We're actually a small enough group. So if you want to just t- um, want to pop off your, um, pop on your microphone and share, that's fine as well. Okay. Um, just trying to cater to everyone. Okay. I really like that you start with like thinking about strengths and comfort level. Yeah, I mean, you... you there's no it's, other way, it's, right? It's, yeah, you have to start from somewhere. Um, but I think that 
we have been, oh, there is a chat, okay. Um, we have been trying, that's kind of where our start point is. Like we have so much experience and we have a lot of strengths, but how do you make that work in the virtual setting? Um, so we can, and Joan had actually brought this question up too about the compensation of teachers. So I can talk briefly about that. Um, and I'll also, if there are any other questions, we can raise those first and then I'll circle back to you, Sherry. Okay. Um, I have uh, something that came, came up while you were talking. Um, there's a question or something I'm thinking about. Um, if, if anyone has done like sort of mentoring, like team teaching where someone is learning sort of like at the beginning of their um, teaching career um, and then paired with someone who's, you know, more experienced, I'd be curious to hear about that type of team teaching. Does anyone on the call have any experiences to share along those lines, Krista Bean? I will say that <clears throat> when Veronica and I first, <clears throat> excuse me, started teaching, to, uh, working together, we had no idea about what we would be doing a year and a half later. Um, it, it just so happens that we were working, uh, so to speak, on the ground with live people uh, because none of this had happened and wasn't even on anyone's mind. By <clears throat> sheer happenstance and luck, we turned out to be a very good team together. We have, uh, at least in some cases, opposite strengths, so we complement each other well. We had also... I was doing some of the, I was doing the some curriculum development and teaching before all this began. And then um, now that we are doing everything virtually, I'm still um, developing curriculum and delivering. Veronica is my technological strength person uh, who's on every call with me. Uh, I am an endless source of mirth to my team um, for the occasional uh, where did that screen go anyway, um, sort of thing. And so, and also when I, when I'm doing something with the people of the Zoom classroom, uh, if I happen to go off on a, in a direction, Veronica reels me back in. So we were already a fun, a good functioning team before any of this happened. Um, and it's just had it been very lucky that it has transferred over into the Zoom classroom. And I think also, Sabine, to the point of the mentor piece, um, you know, Joan comes with a wealth of knowledge of, like she said, the content and the classroom space um, experience. And, you know, as many of you have experienced, the virtual piece was new to everybody. Um, so, for, and Veronica is going to talk a little bit more about that. But I would say in this sense of at the beginning of teaching, um, Veronica was really able to mentor for the technology space. Whereas Joan was able to kind of um, reciprocate the mentorship through the content building. Um, so I, I don't know if that gets to your question a little bit and maybe through the presentation, we'll give you a little bit more. Um, and then we have, we do have some comments in the chat. So Elizabeth has said, I'm currently team teaching and it feels successful in one instance, less successful in the other class. And I'm curious to hear about team teaching experiences that work. Um, so it sounds like we got some conversation happening, which is great. Um, and I think that once we talk through Joan and Veronica's role, um, Elizabeth, maybe you'll be able to find some similarities or differences as to why you're having more success in one than the other. So I just want to thank everyone for um, actively participating in the chat. Appreciate it. And again, we're small enough. So if at any point during the presentation, you want to come off and have a comment or a question, by all means. Um, so we already started to talk about it. It's like Sabine was part of our presentation for our transition. Um, but one of the real components of success is the division of labor um, and understanding that we aren't all great at everything. Um, so how do we kind of break down who does what? And so 
we are currently teaching a financial literacy program, which um, we have some base content, but a lot of it has had to um, be built out by Joan for supplemental and just responding to the needs of the class. Um, so I'm going to give Joan and Veronica an opportunity to talk about how they've broken down the work and why it works and who does what. So um, Veronica, if you want to start us off and talk about your role in the financial literacy component of programming. Sure. So um, pretty much everything that's bullet pointed here, program logistics, technology support, intake, attendance, and basic need referrals. So I've always been like in this department, um, kind of like the coordinator. I coordinate all the work. I'm the first voice or first face that, well, usually it would have been the first face, but through COVID, I'm the first voice that um, mm -hmm. residents are hearing when they're coming in for programs. So I kind of like to just set the tone, let them know that I am not the instructor, but I, I am the additional support um, to the student that's going to be part of class and also to the staff that the instructor for the class. Um, so I, I just like to set the tone that we're a flexible agency. We're not here just for um, the needs of the class. If there's needs outside of the class, if there are barriers outside of the classroom that you need to address um, to be successful in the class, I'm that person to help um, do that as well. Um, I really try to build rapport right from the gate um, just so that they have some type of trust in me and during the class they are able to either reach out to me or to Joan um, about anything that's going on um, to move them forward in the class. Um, I am definitely on every call, um, both for the student and for Joan. Um, sometimes conversations, our financial literacy class has become a community, but sometimes conversations can go so far left and I'm just like, guys, let's come back. Let's get back to the subject. Talk about Walmart another time. Um, so I'm there for that. I'm also there for, because you know, when you're sharing the screen, you can't see what's going on in the chat. Some people are leaving and coming back in. So I'm facilitating all of that. Um, I also um, track attendance. Um, as people are coming in, I go ahead putting that in a spreadsheet. Um, during conversations um, throughout the weeks of class, we, we get to hear a little bit of more of what's going on. So who's looking for a job? Who's looking for a side hustle? Who's looking, so these are resources that um, when we're out of class, I'm trying to find some job leads. I'm looking for um, some up and coming um, side hustles. Amazon has a lot of things going on right now. So I'm posting these in Google Classroom. Um, um, technology support, I am not an IT person, very far from being an IT person, but I have um, taken so many tutorials um, that I am surviving in this virtual world and I am helping my team do the same. And when we decided we're going to run a program, I'm doing the curriculum layout. We did um, some financial literacy with our, our youth this summer, and it was very, very successful. They, they enjoyed it very much. And so we went forward with a financial literacy for adults. Uh, this was all as Zoom, as um, the pandemic was playing out. And we use as a platform the Dave Ramsey program. Um, and we've adjusted ourselves around that. There are certain things that uh, in the practical and real world, and I'll talk about this later, you do need. He's very, um, very negative on credit scores, but in reality, a practical reality, you need a credit score. And I tell people, tell the people in the class, if you're going to have a credit score, make sure it's in the excellent or very good range. And how do you get it there? Um, I'm the person that they see uh, well, Veronica's on camera with me too, but for a lot of the things that we do, I'm the, the voice and the face uh, for whatever our, whatever curriculum we've developed. Um, I correspond with students. Um, Wednesday is my, uh, how do we put it, cheerleader message to them. I let them know what work, if, if any, they have to make up, uh, whether or not, thank you for contributing this week in the classroom. Uh, thank you for being on the call. Every, I make sure I'm corresponding with everybody at least once or twice a week. And then the other thing that I do is I have a pretty wide range of additional resources, articles, uh, YouTube videos, things I can pop into the class as material that the people might want to look at. Uh, websites, uh, just a constant changing. I put in financial literacy in my Google feed and it's like, 
papers falling out of the sky. There's, there's just so much out there. We have nicknamed Joan our um, content curator because she does all of the work of looking through the websites or the materials that don't waste your time. And here's here are some great things based on feedback. Um, so Joan has been able to really um, hone in on the requests of students as well. And um, Albert has said in the chat that Dr. Margaret Brooks is an outstanding resource for financial literacy in the state of Rhode Island. A lot of free resources, such as free state-funded online instructional programs for fin financial literacy. Um, but she also hosts free conferences with buffet breakfasts. You should have led with Ooh. that, Albert. Um, but um, they are on hold due to COVID, he thinks. So just another good resource to share. Any thoughts, questions, responses? thus far? We're good? Okay. Um, so we do use Google Classroom um, and we have had success with it um, as far as just being able to organize and be able to really kind of get our thoughts around what and how we're going to disseminate information. Um, and since Veronica said that the tech is really her, it's her strength, don't let her tell you otherwise. Um, we're gonna have Veronica talk a little bit about how we use by, um, Google Classroom. And then just for context, how many of you use it or are familiar with it? Does anyone, Sabine's got a more kind of sorta. Familiar with it, but don't use it very much. Okay. All right. So Sherry's familiar. Edamar is familiar with it. Okay, great. Just wanted to get some context. And Elizabeth's using it. So Elizabeth, if you have anything to contribute for this part, please feel free. All right, Veronica, take it away. So I think it's important for me to just share how I, um, how do I say this, fell into Google Classroom. Um, so I, I, in the past, never considered myself a teacher. Um, for whatever reason, I'm just like, I'm the coordinator, I put everything together, I hire teachers to help me because I am not a teacher. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID this summer, unfortunately, but fortunately, because now some new skills that I definitely have under my belt, but I was forced to pivot. Um, and pivot has been such a popular word in the last eight months, it's crazy. And I only use pivot when I used to coach basketball. Um, so I had to pivot quickly because we had 60 um, summer youth students that we needed to put into programs quickly. All of my programs were in person, job placements, uh, garden program, the, it, none of it was meant to be online. Um, so I had a month to put everything online um, because CAP was no way not going to have these slots for these 60 youth that needed these slots that were counting on being a part of this program. So. Um, so I started taking tutorials online. So two that I looked into was um, the YouTube channel, um, Teachers Tech, and the other one is Pocket Full of Primary. Um, so I started watching the tutorials, but then I realized that at the end of it, I still didn't know anything. I'm just watching it. So what I started doing was I um, set up, because I was working at home at this time, I set up my iPad um, and I was playing the channel on there and I was pausing it and then practicing on my laptop. So that's how I, I was able to kind of really, okay, now this makes sense. I know exactly what they're talking about. So I did that with um, Google Classroom. From Google Classrooms, I learned that there's a thing called Google Slides, Google Forms. So I just started working my way through what I thought would be useful for some of you. So I got heavy into Google, the use of Google Classroom and um, Google Slides. And it was just watching these YouTube tutorials and practicing on my own. Um, some of you started and there was still a lot that I didn't know. Um, two weeks into the program, one of my um, empowerment coaches here, which was overseeing a group of 20, she's like, oh, what is your grading system? I'm like, what do you mean, what is my grading system? How do you want us to grade these assignments? We've never graded assignments in um, summer youth. We didn't need to. So now that was something that I needed to tackle. Then I had th set up three different classrooms and I was manually putting each the same assignment in three different places. Then I learned the reuse button. You can reuse assignments from all the other classrooms and just add them to each classroom. So there was just things that, um, it was a trial and ever. I, I will tell you there were nights that I was up to 11, 12 o'clock at night, putting in the assignment for the next day. 
was I haven't quite figured out how to use everything. But as I was doing this and as I was um, watching the next day as the students were at their debrief sharing about the assignments and how impactful it was and how the way I set it up worked for them. So it was like, I am a teacher. I could do this. I Google Classroom made me a teacher, but I was a teacher long before that. I just wasn't recognizing it. Um, and Google Classroom for virtual um, classes has been it's, it's been great for me. It's been a place where I can not only share assignments, share resources, and create community with the class using the stream. Um, so I would suggest when you're taking the tutorial, pause the video and practice. Because if you're watching a video that you never um, navigated through a platform, you're still not gonna understand it at the end. So um, it worked for me to just pause rewind, pause, rewind, get through all it as I was building out. But even um, it took the real actual experience of rolling out the classroom to really learn what I was missing, what I needed, um, and learn about so many, so many of the resources that's on there that um, will work for communication for the student and the teacher. Um, and I think that's it. Anyone have any questions for me? Okay. Um, I, I will say that I think one of the hardest things about the virtual space is wait time. Um, I don't know if anyone else experiences this, trying to, you know, you're trying to type. Um, Itamar says Google Classroom is very useful. Joan Ford says good tips. Um, but that's, again, another component of this teaching space of just people need time to type. Right? <laughs> we don't type as fast as we talk. Or even um, time to unmute. Sometimes um, I find that we try to move on and then they're like, no, 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 I have something to say. They was just on the screen trying to find the unmute button. Yep. Um, all right, so we talked about how we use Google Classroom, how Joan and Veronica um, divide and conquer. And so specific to the financial literacy piece, um, Joan has done a lot of, um, like I said, curating of materials. So we just wanted to share some of these resources with you. Um, so Joan, I'm going to, I'm going to stop talking. Okay. Um, as I said, I long, long ago typed financial literacy into my Google, um, into my feed and I just get a ton of things every single day and you know it, it's it's the idea of just finding the things that work for you um so for example if you haven't seen anthony o'neill's 19 and homeless and we put the link in there to that i use that as an example of somebody who pretty much had everything uh that they wanted he was going to college college was paid for uh he was gonna he was gonna be a great success and in less than six months he got thrown out of school lost his apartment and was thirty six thousand dollars in credit card debt and I use that kind of as an example of, of how quickly things can go bad or badly um, and then he of course pulled himself out of the hole and now is a Dave Ramsey uh, personality but it's a very very good video of how fast things things can go wrong and I liken it to going down a water slide the uh, the trip down is a lot of fun but then when you get to the pool at the end sometimes it's full of ice cubes and maybe you don't want to be there and how do you get out uh, I also use a lot of Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan, uh, again, is a Ramsey personality. Um, Ramsey Solutions undertook the biggest study of millionaires ever, ever completed. And from that study, he had the material to write uh, Every Everyday Millionaire. And Everyday Millionaire is a book about people who are just regular folks who did not inherit their wealth. They built it uh, and how they went about doing that. And then one day, um, so this came through my feed. Uh, this is this thing called Clever Girl Finance, and I looked it up. And it's actually an excellent, excellent resource uh, for women in their relationship with money. And one of the classes, uh, the last class of the financial literacy course that we're currently doing will be the effect on money and relationships. And this particular link takes you to um, the founder of, of Clever Girl Finance and some other women just talking very frankly about finances and and they get right into it and she when she says all right ladies joint or separate and they talk about whether or not they combine finances um or not or how and it was really quite uh 
it was kind of eye-opening, but I did have an excellent line from there where one woman said, I thought my money would be mine and his would be ours. And I, got a, I thought, well, there you go. We use the Dave Ramsey platform, but not all of it. Um, like I said before, Dave Ramsey does not believe in credit scores. Reality and practicality say that you really do need to have one. I just tell people, make sure it's a, either in the very good or excellent range and how do you get it there and then so now we have something that's going to be a little more uh, interactive one of the things we use in the intake is the consumer finance personal banking assessment which by the way um, the consumer finance uh, banking consumer CFPB uh, website is an absolute tre treasure trove of materials um, over the over the time that I've been doing this I end up with uh, just piles and piles of things that I can go back to. So uh, we're going, everyone here now uh, is going to take the consumer, um, the CFPB assessment of how you feel about your finances. No one can see it, but you. Yep, and I just put the link in the chat for everybody. Um, so that'll lead you right to it. And again, this will take you about two to three minutes. Um, but just, just a little break from, from our voices. From listening to us, yeah. It's only 10 questions. So we're gonna give you all a minute, go ahead. And when you're finished, just come back and either give us a thumbs up or an okay. All right, it looks like people are starting to finish up. I'll give you another minute. All right, so if you haven't finished, by all means, feel free to finish up or, or um, do it later. But for the people who did finish, were you surprised? Or was it a, were you like, no, I'm, I'm good. That's where, where I think I would be. Where did you fall? What's that? Thank you, Kelly. Oh, good. Okay. Veronica, do you want to talk a little bit about why we use this assessment and what kind of its purpose is within our program? We, um, we use it as like a, a self-awareness tool. Um, these are questions that they may, um, our participants may not be asking themselves. One that really stands out for me is the one about um, how does it hurt you financially to give a gift at a wedding or at a birthday party? And um, just kind of reflecting on that. Like, um, so sometimes when people think about it, they're like, yeah, sometimes I, I, you know, for a couple of weeks, it puts me in a bad place trying to give a gift. Um, so, um, in the class, we talk about ways of saving and what we can do 
when it comes to saving. So this is kind of like the prep work of things we want them to start thinking about and analyzing on their financial background. Um, sometimes they're coming in at a score about a 50 or 56. Um, and that is the average for, for Americans um, who take this scale. So I'm like, you're average with everyone else. But like Joan always says, we want you to be we don't want you to be the average person. We don't want you to be everyone else. We want you to be doing better financially. So this is just a, a tool to get them to start thinking about um, what are some things that they need to work on um, to become more um, financially stable in life. And we take it again at the end of the class to see if um, it's a 12 week course with a six months follow up after the end of the class. So by then we expect some behavioral changes um, and we hope to see a different school at, at this um, at the post testing. It also helps us, um, it also helps students who are enrolling. I mean, the, this is an adult cohort, but it also just gets them to start thinking about questions they want to ask. You know, sometimes if I think we've all been, I mean, this training is a perfect example. What do you want to know, right? You walk into a training and what questions do you have? And, you know, it's kind of like, it's a from you out, you have to ask, like, what, what do you want to get take away from this? But it helps to set the context for a lot of individuals. They come in and they're very excited about, you know, gaining some, some financial tips and resources and tools, um, but then what do you do with them? Or what do I, what do I, I don't know what I don't know type of situation. Um, so it just helps us to get them to start thinking about what they want to bring to the class, what they want to take away from it. Um, and I also just want to go back for a second and talk a little bit about the Ramsey curriculum um, because the question has come up around payment for teachers. So this, so a, a couple of reasons of the, the why and, and, um, kind of just a little bit of history behind it. So Ramsey is a paid platform, um, but we, so it was through a grant that we were able to um, cover the funding, um, but it works really well in the virtual space because of the format of the um, curriculum. So like Joan said, she's doing a lot of supplemental, um, a lot of additional curriculum to, to enhance what the Ramsey content offers. But what we really liked was it is a, comp a compilation of videos that has a pre and post test attached to each chapter. So when we broke it down in Google Classroom, it was very easy to put into modules, um, you know, break down for week one, week two, week three. Um, so I just wanted to give that context piece that we did. We did apply for grant funding to cover the cost. It covered the cost of a one year licensure um, for as many students as we wanted to put through it um, but it has seemed to be a very good fit just based on how it is laid out and how we were able to transition that into google classroom so just a little bit of clarification and every so often there'll be something like i said earlier that ramsey just doesn't cover he's very very rigid about his plan one being the credit score and so i developed that lesson that and we were able to use that um, he didn't have anything on identity theft and so I wrote that one, just so being able to um, cover what gaps he does not do, because we're using a youth curriculum and they're not too worried about ID theft you know, or, thing, or having a credit score yet. And so when it comes to something where there's a little bit of a gap, I, I jump in and develop that lesson. All right, any thoughts? Did any of you go to have to go to Financial Peace University prior to using the program. Joan? I did not you'll go to actual Financial Peace University, but I, uh, I've been following uh, Dave Ramsey for, on his radio show for years uh, and also uh, on YouTube. I'm familiar enough with the, with the program. Um, and then um, it, I think I'm from, I don't, Actually, part of this youth curriculum is Dave Ramsey running Financial Peace University. So I kind of feel like I've been to it. And Joan wants to know, um, do we use breakout rooms during the class with two trainers? No, because we're both in the, in the Zoom classroom at the, at the same time and we, ha we haven't had to do that yet. Um, I, I'm, I'm doing the facilitating and Veronica is backing me up by taking attendance or bailing me out of any um, technological fund that I get myself into. Um, so we're actually working as a team and so it hasn't been necessary to use the breakout rooms. 
and our, the groups groups are, our groups are small. So we enroll 15 students, but about six of them are not able to be on the call with us because of work schedules. So we record our sessions just like Joan is doing today. Um, and we post it in the Google Classroom for week to week. So for those people who are not able to join the call live, they're able to view um, the recording and the slideshows afterwards. Um, so the class is really small. We're looking at about seven, eight people plus me and Joan. So we're able to kind of um, do activities and do any group stuff with that small group at a time. So there hasn't been a need for breakout rooms thus far. And also um, something I'd else to add, this group gelled very, very quickly and they share um, a lot with one another. Uh, and they've been, somebody will say, well, I was having this happened over here and somebody will jump in and say, oh, that happened to me and this is what I did about it. Uh, and I think that for, that for me, that's been really one of the great fun things about the classes that they've come together for each other very, very well. Um, they've shared their email addresses and so on so that they can support one another. And that, that I was hoping that would happen and it didn't. And so that was good. Okay. Um, so that is, I mean, that's kind of the, the, the behind the scenes of how we do what we do. Um, and I'm going to, I want to add just one more point to Veronica and um, the breakout room piece. So we have a, a cohort of 15. And so they are responsible for doing a myriad of assignments and responses throughout the week. And then we hold two one hour discussions, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. Um, and that's the time that they come and they go over assignments if there are any questions that came up. Um, but it's also, that's kind of where that community has started community is built um, and has really kind of taken off as far as you know they had requests um, they wanted a job posting um, stream in Google Classroom so that way you know we were we know we get tons of um, postings for jobs and you know who's hiring and so they really wanted something where they could have that all in one place so that was a response that we were able to do pr pretty quickly um, but the 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 conversations twice a week help to reinforce, um, but as long as they are self-pacing and getting all of their assignments done on a weekly basis, um, that's really what um, we focus on. So I just had that point. Um, and then we just have a couple, you know, takeaways that we wanted to share with the group as far as how to navigate and reflection. So um, the co-teacher piece and the designation of roles and responsibilities. So again, this started out between Joan and Veronica very informally. You know, they've, they work together, they know what each person brings to the table, but when you're in, you know, if you co-facilitate and you're in person, it's very different than being able to give a verbal cue, you know, via a Zoom meeting. How is it coming across, you know, when, when you have to say, okay, let's, let's re reel it back in. Um, so there is a level of relationship that has to be built in order to do that. Um, but, actually being able to see it and break it down. So we, we, we meet weekly as well. Um, and that has also kind of just helped to delineate who does what within our team. Um, constructing a routine for the Zoom calls and for the week, that is, you know, it seems straightforward, but again, it just looks and feels so different in a virtual space because so much more needs to actually be put on paper um, or put in Microsoft Word virtually <laughs> um, for people to access. And then the virtual office hours. Um, so this is something that we have available. Um, the other component that we have is, so we have internal CAP staff who participate in these, in a cohort, you know, everything is always open to them. And so a lot of times they can't be part of the recording. And so the office hour is an opportunity for them to also follow up with Joan. So although we are not seeing one another in person, Joan and Veronica and I are still very accessible to people in this class. Um, and the biggest takeaway is celebrate every accomplishment even the small ones, because as you know, navigating, you know, your, your tech space, um, it, you feel good when you figure out that little tip and trick that takes away so much of your work, like the, the reuse button um, in Google Classroom. Um, and so especially for our adults who are taking this program, uh, taking this course, 
this is their first experience taking a course virtually. So really celebrating everything that they're doing individually um, is important. And also for us as a team, um, we do, you know, we're, st we're still figuring things out. And again, like Veronica said, it's a lot of pause and rewind, pause and rewind. Um, and we find ourselves doing that, you know, when we're meeting, okay, let, you know, let's pause and figure out what we did well and how are we going to use that to inform future program creation. Um, and, you know, just being gentle with yourself and the people who you're working with and the people who are coming through your programs because this is, it's tough and, you know, it's very new for all of us. Uh, so that was kind of like our, our, our team debrief as far as what's important. Um, and Albert has, he is holding the chat down let's see um so albert wants to know will other adult educators ever be able to drop into a class to see how the dame ramsey classes run or will you be willing to do a virtual class with adult educators so we can see the class in action to see if it can be adapted um i don't see why not it may be worth the state adult ed investing in the dave ramsey program for adult ed centers um so thank you for all of those questions albert i would say that if people were interested in learning or seeing how we use the material, by all means, I think we are open to that. Um, I'm going to let Joan and Veronica also chime in for that response as well. So I've actually um, developed a presentation on the use of foundations um, that I'm sure we can we can do, um, and um, we can do a walkthrough, share our screen, do the walkthrough, share the videos. Um, and I think at that point, if you were more interested in actually um, seeing the videos, watching the videos and taking the pre and post test, then we can make you a student and um, have you check it out that way. But I'm definitely open to sharing how, how we use it, what it looks like, um, and if it can be used in other places, why not? And I'm not Oh, go ahead, John. I'm certainly open to doing it also. Um, if you go back and use the links to like 19 and Homeless and the Clever Girls, uh, all of that, it it's kind of gives you an idea of uh, some of the videos that we use. I'm constantly on the lookout for something new. Uh, the new things are coming down all the, all the time. Uh, and it's, uh, I would point out too that in the class right now, um, the pandemic has has had some effects some people are not working some people are working some people are working full-time and going to school full-time and and i think uh, we talked a little bit about or not a, not a lot about what 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 next and for a lot of people we're it's never again never again will i get caught without having savings never again will i get caught financially um for a lot of people they thought they were in good shape and this is expose the cracks in their financial plans uh and now we're trying to stuff those cracks and so the, that the water isn't coming through and so it's it's been it's been kind of like riding a skateboard on ice and you know, we're constantly uh adjusting it'd be a good pivoting adjusting or whatever whatever word that you would like to use but it's been a great learning experience professionally and i and I think for them too, they, we've gotten some very positive feedback from the class. Um, so I'm going to, Veronica, do you mind just putting our emails in the chat? And then we can, um, if anyone is interested in that, or Albert, if you want to talk more about that, we're happy to have a follow up conversation. With that. Um, could you touch on the question that Sherry posed at the beginning about like, programs and budgets and how do you do two teachers in one classroom? Yes, absolutely. Um, so again, Sabine with the transitions, we are at Q&A, <laughs> so we will kick off with that. So this is something that Joan and I had spoken about. And so um, right now, Joan, Veronica, and myself are a team of three. So Joan and Veronica are both full-time employees. Um, Joan is our primary education and training specialist. So she is primarily responsible for all of the implementation and facilitation. But for the sake of the virtual space, um, we allocated some of Veronica's time within her, her full-time job to support Joan. Um, so while Joan is doing a lot of the, she's doing the, the weekly 
lead facilitation, the follow-up, and that is part of her job description. Um, with this grant, we were able to allocate just a percentage of Veronica's time to support this program. So we didn't have to bring on an additional um, staff member to run this. Um, my question isn't um, to Brittany, Veronica, and Joan, but thank you guys so much for this model. It's really interesting. I wanted to just um, shift a little bit, if, if unless anyone is has a question to them, because I know that um, Elizabeth is on the call and Ryrel is also doing team teaching, but the the team the teams are both in the same content areas, like they're both teaching the math or the the science. Mm -hmm. Um, and Elizabeth said in the chat that in one class it goes really well and in the other not so well. And, and I was just wondering if you could say a few quick words about that, Elizabeth, if, it, if you don't mind me asking. Um, no, no, I don't mind. I, I do think uh, that you talked about playing to your strengths as a team, and that is the model we use as well, playing to our strengths. And that has been successful, I think, across the team teaching, um, at least on the ABE side. And then um, the other piece, and, and you touched on this too in your presentation, there is a piece that is luck like community. You said you had a really good cohort and that also plays into the difference between one of the classes and the other. The more successful class are st is the bulk of those students are new, to Rural, and so they don't know anything but the, the um, online environment, the virtual environment. So they were more open to creating community virtually, and it fed on itself because they were more open to, to community. They participated in like the online community conversations more, and then there was more participation in it, so then there was more to respond to, and it, it had a good spiral whereas the other class that that in my opinion and it's just my opinion is wasn't as successful it there was still a lot of like oh well, this was so much better in person and the morning of yeah. like it would have this is fine this is good but in capital letters <laughs> so that's yeah. a piece of it that's just a piece that you can't get away um the other piece i think that lend to the success over, of one over the other, I think is one evolved more into a model of true co-teaching, like the way you were describing of the, the playing to your strengths, um, everybody having a role, but the roles blending together so that there's some overlap so that it is true team. Where in the other one, I think we fell into splitting the work, which is great because it's you were doing half the work, but not a great model in terms of the teaching the content. Like at some point, you have to come together. There has to be some overlap so that you, you are moving, you create momentum and you're moving the class forward together. And I think when we got to the end of the the 10 week semester that we have this time, we were both like, oh wait, this last two classes where we've done it really as a team, this is the way we should have been doing it all semester. Um, so. So did that mean like you were both online at the same time? We um, did, in both of the classes that I taught this semester, we both teachers were online for both the whole class the whole time. And it started as, oh, we'll just do this in the beginning because one person can be the tech person, like you get the text message while you're on the call, I can't get in. And then the, there'd be one person who could deal with that while the other person is, is, is teaching. Um, but then it just evolved that it works better to both people because those questions do not stop coming, even in week five and six and seven, like you're still like answering like, oh, I can't find the meat. I can't, where's the chat box? Where's the, like those, those questions we're still having. So it just, uh, that evolved naturally. And then we liked both being on. Um, it gives you it, it gives you the reflection piece right of okay what when what did we do that actually worked today and how do we replicate that for future 
classes. Um, but, and so Joan asked a question, what are the questions someone should ask before jumping into team teaching? And so can, Elizabeth, I think you're starting to get at that just based on the experience. Um, and you know, and it, that would be something that would be, you know, it would be like a nugget of information of like, here, here are the questions. Let's ask these before we get started. Um, I remember having to do a team teaching for, for um, a summer program where we were bringing a certified educator and a, um, a community partner together. And we literally had a set of questions that they had to have an interview with one another. Um, they hadn't worked together before, so it was a different dynamic. But sometimes you just have to come up with some questions and figure out how are we going to navigate forward. Um, again, I think that we are very grateful um, that Veronica and Joan were able to navigate that you know, because they work together so closely, but you're absolutely right, Elizabeth. It, so much of it has to do with the, the cohort that you're facilitating and the people in it, but also the chemistry between the two individuals. Uh, so taking all of that into consideration. And also the very first class, uh, we made sure everybody knew how to mute and unmute themselves because <laughs> we didn't know the level. We didn't know the level of people, how comfortable people were with using, um, with using Zoom. And, you know, something that kind of makes me smile is that everyone's talking about how we're getting used to doing this. And by the time we're really used to doing it, we're going to be back in the classroom teaching in person again. It's going to, we're going to have to reverse that again. Um, what do you mean I have to be in there? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I think about that all the time too. That like yeah, just as we get good at this, then I'll be right. Like, right. Yeah. Um, so that concludes our portion of the presentation. I want to honor your time. I know that in an hour is is, a, is even a lot to ask on a, on a day where you probably have had three other Zoom meetings. Um, so I just want to thank you all for participating and coming to this discussion. And again, if there's any other way we can be of support, we're happy to. And we're happy to continue the conversation about having you um, be part and join of the, the Ramsey curriculum so you can get a feel for that as well. Thank you. Hi everyone. Thank you for thank you for being okay. here. Yeah. Joan, I didn't know if you have any closing thoughts or we're good. No, just the same. Thank you. Appreciate it. I think interesting, interesting thoughts and conversations. I think we could have gone on and could have gone on. It was even more to say. So for sure. All right. Thank you, Albert. We'll talk to you and yeah. a follow up. Oh, you can follow up with me anytime. All right, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Joan.